recently invited to give a presentation in Salzburg, Austria. I spoke about the Arch Hadron Collider located in Geneva, Switzerland. Here I will summarize the first part of the talk. If you wish to see the entire presentation, just click on the link below. So what was my message? My message was that we should nuke the LHC, preferably with the white-collar workers in it. In 1935, Niels Bohr declared quantum mechanics to be a complete theory. Yet today, the members of this religion request and are granted more money to search for more particles to complete the incomplete picture of quantum mechanics in monasteries such as the LHC. Since Bohr's death in 1962, the new breeds of mathematicians have allegedly discovered particles never envisioned by Bohr, among them the tauon, the gluon, the tachyon, the phonon, which is a particle of sound, the plasmon, the polariton, not to be confused with the all-important polaron, which as we all know is a bosonic quasi-particle, and six types of quarks. More recently, the particle mathematicians at CERN began to look for particles they invented to plug yet more holes in mathematical physics, observations that the mathematicians cannot explain. The ever-elusive dark matter that supposedly surrounds galaxies. And the Higgs boson, the particle of weight. A theory that was supposed to become simpler has just gotten ever more complex. And there's no end in sight. Of course, this state of affairs suits the mathematicians at Harvard and Cambridge just fine. The ability to create particles at will with a magic wand gives them job security for centuries to come. Whenever a particle theorist observes a phenomenon that he can't explain, he just creates a new particle, enters its speed and mass in his equation, and then asks for funds to find it by smashing more particles. So what is wrong with this picture? Well, for starters, not a single individual working at the LHC or at any other accelerator in the world can draw the simplest atom, the hydrogen atom, for you. When you were in high school, you learned that hydrogen is comprised of two discrete particles, a proton and an electron. We have no problem with a proton. The official proton has greater than zero size and diameter and dimensions. The problem is with the electron. The electron is alleged to have zero size, diameter, and dimensions. This hypothesis is quite convenient to a mathematician. When explaining phenomena such as ionization and electricity, he illustrates the electron as a discrete bead orbiting the proton. Yet when you ask him to confirm the planetary model of the atom, he does an about-face and disavows everything he just told you. He clarifies that the planetary model of the atom is merely a handy analogy to help you visualize what his equations tell him. The mathematician further clarifies that he and his peers don't know what the subatomic world looks like, that it is nothing like our macro world in appearance or behavior. If you press the matter further, he flatly tells you that your question is unscientific. You are chasing a straw man. Such issues are raised in philosophy or perhaps in art classes. They are not the subject of physics. Well, let's see if these excuses have any merit. Here, a Swedish team led by Mrs. Anne Luillier claims to have filmed a discrete electron. This paper was published in the official, respectable mainstream media, the Physical Review Letters, a bastion of the religion of mathematical physics. 
Another team, led by Mr. Tanamura from Hitachi Corporation in Japan, claims to have handled one electron at a time. Tanamura's paper was published in the Proceedings of the International Symposium on Frontiers of Science. Indeed, Mr. Tanamura claims in his paper that he also directly observed magnetic lines of force, which almost all mathematicians will go to extremes to convince you are not real. The mathematicians should really try to get their act together. And here we see a track allegedly made by an electron in a bubble chamber. Now doesn't that line look like it's more than zero dimensional, zero size, zero width? The particle mathematician may try to save face by clarifying that we're not really staring at an electron, but at a trail of ionized gas that the electron left in its path. His argument is irrelevant. How does the surface of a zero-dimensional, zero-sized non-entity strike the gas molecules in the chamber? In fact, we'll make it easier on the particle mathematicians. In 1932, Carl Anderson claimed that a positive electron carved this groove in his wafer. All that the quantum mathematicians need to do now is place a ruler across the line to measure the diameter or width of their positive electron. The point is that all these claims require the electron to be greater than zero size, zero dimensions, and zero diameter or width. If the electron is greater than zero size, we end up with quantum's planetary version of the hydrogen atom, the one that the mathematicians deny at every turn. Quantum mechanics has never offered any other model. Quantum is a particle theory from beginning to end. The planetary model you learned in high school and which every teacher on Earth invokes to explain behaviors and properties such as ionization and electricity is and has been the official version of the quantum atom since inception. If the electron is not a discrete particle orbiting the proton, all of quantum mechanics suffers sudden death. And if it is zero-dimensional and zero-size, we have absolutely nothing orbiting the nucleus. Or to simulate electricity. But if the electron is a discrete particle, as quantum alleges, we have an even bigger problem on our hands. How do we now explain atomic bonding rationally? How do two discrete beads attract one another to form complex molecules? The answer is yet more amusing than quantum's zero-dimensional, zero-size electron. According to quantum, it is the multiple orbits or locations of an electron that keep two atoms faithful to each other. The orbits or locations of the electron are said to form a region. The mathematician now proposes that the regions themselves merge with each other and form a physical bond. So what should we do with CERN and the LHC? What the hell? Press the red button. Wow.